Welcome back to another North Carolina Tar Heels football recruiting podcast here on TarHeelIllustrated.com. And if you are watching us on our YouTube channel, that is called Tar Heel Illustrated. I'm THI publisher Andrew Jones, and joining me is our director of football recruiting, Miss Dina King. And Dina, we haven't done a round robin type thing, a whole encompassing football recruiting podcast for a while and there's been so much going on the last few weeks around Carolina recruiting so we decided right now perfect time to just sort of rip open the box and see what's in there and kind of bounce around a few areas surrounding Carolina football recruiting the first I want to get to is Evan Bennett he was a surprise commitment the other day usually we know I would say 98.9 percent of the time we know we have a video ready. We we know when these kids are going to announce. We just respect uh, their moment, allowing them their moment. We don't put anything out there ahead of time. And then when the kid pops, we're ready to roll with all kinds of content. But Evan Bennett, we admit, caught us by surprise. So we didn't have a video. I was in the air flying to Syracuse when it happened. So I get off the plane. The plane lands. I take my phone off airplane mode and Dina's got like 647 text messages about all kinds of stuff going on, including Evan Bennett, six foot three, 205 pound linebacker in the class of 2024. The first member of the class of 2024, Eatonton, Georgia, the Gatewood school. Uh, you have learned a lot about him in the last few days since he popped. So what can you tell us about Evan Bennett? First of all, it never fails when you're traveling somewhere. I know. Oh, you know what breaks loose. So, uh, but yeah, I told I told uh, I told someone from UNC football Sunday night that I fly tomorrow because I went out a day early because of the terrible weather and it was snowing a ton of the time when I was up in Syracuse. And I said something's going to happen when I'm in the plane. Well, multiple things happen, and when I landed, I'm like, ah, well, here we go. So, go ahead, Evan Bennett. <laughs> yeah, Ben, he, he got offered back in the fall. Uh, staff really liked him, and uh, he was one of around 20 guys that came up last weekend and took a uh, unofficial visit on campus, was at the basketball game against uh, NC State. What a great environment for those youngsters to be in, seeing, yeah. um, you know, two rival schools go at it. You know, anytime you can go in the Dean Smith Center and watch a, a game, that, that has to um, always be fun. So being it from Georgia, and, and, you know, we've harped on it so many times about some of these Georgia kids, uh, not all of them can go to play for the Bulldogs. So it's the rest of the country's uh, uh, luck that, Georgia has so many, so many talented football players. And uh, he is a guy that, you know, got that offer uh, and made that trip this past weekend and just basically shut it down and said, this is, this is where I want to play football. This is where I want to go to school. And, uh, you know, basically went on and sealed his, his spot on the 2024 of uh, commitment list. <clears throat> you talked to him that day. In fact, um, I think by the time I finally talked to you, mm -hmm. uh, you had actually already talked to him. So you had wheels in motion rolling like crazy. So I was trying to play quick catch up there. You talked to him that day. Uh, what did he tell you about why Carolina and why he felt so strongly about it? That, it would, hey, you know what? I'm shutting everything down. I'm good with this. We talked about the program, you know, being a, a, a power five program that has a great shot of doing big things. He believes in Coach Brown, his, in Coach Brown's mission about getting Carolina back to national relevance. And, and plus, he, he just liked everything about North Carolina, the school, the tradition. He, he talked about the – the, the players' lounge, how awesome that place was, and they're still still adding things. He talked about Carolina blue, the color and the gear and everything. So, you know, it, it's a big recruiting tool for North Carolina to have that Jordan brand. Uh, it, it's just something about the 
the the Carolina blue that stands out to some of these kids and everything. And he's six foot six foot three, two oh five. He he's a great physical specimen. He he's a versatile kid. He he played on both sides of the ball and, and for his high school team. So uh you know, he, he makes me think, you know, I've not actually seen uh, this uh, Caleb Lavallee play yet because he's just got to UNC, but it kind of reminds me a little, about, little bit about him, a Georgia kid that played on both sides of the ball, played running back and linebacker. So, yeah, uh, you know. He, he looks he looks like he has a frame that you can add to without any issue. He's going to be on Yeah, the and linebackers, you know, they're going to – you know, with with Cedric and Power moving possibly on, they're they're needing to get some young linebacker, linebackers. Absolutely. As we continue to dive into this big box of football recruiting, one of the really impressive things that we can pull out is right there at Providence Day. I mean, the Providence Day is loaded. There's always a school in Charlotte that's just freaking loaded. You know, uh, Mallet Creek's had its time, and I know that uh, Myers Park has had its time. Right now, it's there was a day when Independence always had guys. Now it's Providence Day this year. Uh, Carolina, we've talked a lot about Jaden Davis, and we're going to get into him. But also, there's Jordan Ship, the four-star receiver. We've seen him. We saw him at the at the Showtime camp. Channing Goodwin, three-star receiver. I know Brandon has seen him in some seven-on-sevens and talked to him, and of course. Big time stud David Sanders, number one offensive tackle in the class 25. We're going to hit all four of these kids in general. So let's start with Jaden Davis. You know Jaden well. You've seen him a lot. You've talked to him a lot in person just recently. You gave him your award as the state player of the year. There was so much stuff about Michigan, but Michigan's kind of unsettled right now. And I think that North Carolina from my read, uh, is in position, I'm not going to say to, to, to pounce on it, but certainly to possibly take advantage of that. Well, Providence Day is coached by my really good friend, Chad Greer. And I will say every time I go to Providence Day, it's just a, a great experience to go down there. They have great facilities, a great coaching staff. And, you know, Coach Greer is one of the best offensive minds and in my opinion, all over all over the United States. A great quarterback coach, coached his son, Will, who's with the Cowboys now, Coach Sam Hartman, who wait for us and now is going to be at Notre Dame, and uh, just, just a great guy. But, um, yeah, you speak about Providence Day. You're not even mentioning some of the other guys that was on that team that won a state championship this past fall. Chris Peel, who's uh, went and signed with Georgia, another 2024 kid, Brody Barnhart, who I really liked in the defense secondary. Uh, he's released his top schools, and North Carolina wasn't one of those top schools. But, uh, he, you know, Jaden Davis, we'll get to him. You know, I, I've, when I've talked about Jaden Davis, I've, I've always told you what a um, – a really smart, intelligent kid. This is he's got he's got a lot on him, and he just seems like he's so cool. He knows exactly what to say when reporters and everybody come up to him. He's just he doesn't have a bad word to say about anybody. You know, if I asked him about North Carolina, he'll talk about North Carolina, the Ohio State, Georgia, Clemson. Always positive. Um, but like you said, Michigan has always pretty much been the presumed leader for him. And with all with Coach Harbaugh and flirting with the NFL and some other issues up at Michigan, you know, it's kind of got a lot of us that follows recruiting wondering why, you know, he hadn't already committed to Michigan because we, we assume because he has been up to Michigan a lot. But with all that going on, he's open. I was down there, like you said, the other two weeks ago to give him the award. And um, the next day, I believe, Coach Brown and Coach Lindsey 
uh, Coach Galloway, Coach Stigman, I think the whole, basically the whole staff was down in Charlotte. They went to Providence Day, you know, because, you know, you're crazy if you're not going to Providence Day. And he yeah. told me he was wanting to get to know Coach Lindsey. Um, obviously, he knows Coach Brown and what Coach Brown has done, but he wanted to get a better feel for Coach Lindsey. <laughs> Excuse so, me. So let me ask you, let me ask you, Staying on on Jaden Davis, um, the door has at the very it's at least slightly ajar for North Carolina and some other schools. And and you told me and perhaps you you can you you can elaborate on this, that maybe there's another look at UNC that he's giving and that it's one, you know, Sam is now going to start year two going in with the commanders drake is going to be one of the top two heisman guys going into this start of the season you know behind caleb williams obviously that they're charlotte kids and and and, and it mattered to them being at north carolina and they've been able they're able to reach their dreams going through north carolina and develop going through north carolina now that was under longo Lindsay's there now that might be a little bit different and maybe Jaden waits a little bit longer but you you sense that the appeal of what those guys were able to achieve at the in-state school might resonate a little bit more with Jaden now than maybe it did before. That's just sort of a hunch you have. Yeah, Jaden is really close to both of those guys, Sam and Drake. And for them being in Charlotte, it, it just it shows that, you know, uh, a kid from Charlotte can get can get to the NFL no matter where he goes, you know. I mean, uh, like you said, Sam with Washington, Drake, possibly being the top pick in the draft, you know, and that's the last two quarterbacks. Lice, both were record-setting quarterbacks. Uh, they both uh, – they all three have played for uh, Anthony Boone, uh, seven on seven mm-hmm. with the Carolina Stars, and Anthony's done – Anthony's resume – is outstanding, you know, with, yeah. a, with quarterbacks and everything. So, yeah, I think that, you know, the door wasn't closed on Carolina. It just maybe creep a little bit more open. And, you know, Mac is, Mac is all about trying to keep the, the, the in-state guys home. And I'm sure he's pushing that narrative that, Hey, look at Sam, look at Drake you can be the next one, you know? I mean, that that's just the way the, the quarterback room is. You know, Jaden would be there. You know, Drake moves on. He'll be there with, with Tad Hudson, another Charlotte prospect. Um, our uh, good Connor quarterback. Harrell. Yeah, Connor Harrell out in from Alabama. So, Jefferson Boas, we don't know what Jefferson's plans are, but – it would be set up where he would have an opportunity to yeah. to come in. So, um, if a couple months ago, I'd say the the door was was you know almost closed, but now it's opened up due to due to other factors. And and he's he's a smart kid. He's he's not rushing it. He wants to make sure his parents are heavily involved in the decision. Coach Greer is a good guy to having a corner to to guide and everything. So it'll be interesting to see what else, where Jordan, go, I mean, Jaden goes uh, the next few weeks and, you know, on into February. We're going to continue talking about the 2024 quarterback options in a few minutes. We're just doing Providence Day right now. So we'll come back to Jaden briefly, and then we'll talk about Jake Merklinger and K.J. Jackson. Jordan Ship, four-star wide receiver, also at Providence Day. He's a big-time player. Again, he's one of these kids that two years ago you said he's going to be a big-time player. Keep an eye on him. He's going to continue to ascend, and that's exactly what he's done, Dina. Well, it's in his bloodlines. His daddy, Steve, was a tremendous wide receiver from Charlotte. Went to Florida and everything, and uh, you know, following in his foot, footsteps is is big, you know. And Brandon P, you know, he he was down there with me on a, a, some, I think, at Rivals Camp, and 
uh, he Brandon went and watched Providence Day because Brandon's based in Charlotte, so he can just run right over and see all these guys. But um, you know, he built a relationship with Jordan and getting some uh, recruiting info for us and everything. And at that time, Jordan hadn't got an offer from Carolina, but uh, mm-hmm. Coach Galloway, uh, you know, I don't know. Carolina sometimes are they they love to be thorough in their evaluations, and they finally gave Jordan an offer. Jordan and Jaden were at North Carolina FMU game uh, last fall. I think believe Jordan come back for I think maybe uh, another game uh, later on in the fall. But you know he's he's a uh, he's got Michigan on his list to NC State. You know a lot of uh, local schools around here are really interested. He's a big time playmaker, so uh, uh, he he loves North Carolina. He was was up there uh, with the court from Providence Day this, this past weekend. Took in the the basketball game, had fun. And he's always saying, you know, Coach Galloway's his guy. So Coach Galloway has built tremendous relationships with all these. Uh, uh, wide receiver guys let's stay with the wide receivers of providence day with channing goodwin we have a piece that we should have run by the time this podcast is out on him you spoke to him just a couple days ago so uh, he he's a kid that he's not getting as much attention as jordan ship obviously and jane davis gets a ton and sanders but wh- whoever gets channing goodwin's gonna get themselves a pretty good football player yeah, his, his he's kind of like uh, George Ship. His dad played at University of Michigan, so all three of these got Michigan high on their list, you know. And and a lot of people are just assuming that all three of them could be a package deal. And of course, when you talk to all the guys, they have to do what's best for them. They, they always say, oh, it would be nice playing together with, with those, but they got to do what's, what's best. But uh, <clears throat> he got an offer, I think it was uh, last week from Carolina. And it's, you know, it's been, a, uh, he's been waiting on that. Uh, he, he was being very truthful that he's got to, to build relationships with uh, Coach Galloway and the staff because, of course, you know, with them offering late, they've not built that those relationships with him. So, but he he went up this past weekend, took in the game. Also said he had fun. It was it's always fun to see the kids post on social media. They're always got their phones out, and and at Carolina they march them out in front of everybody and, and stuff. So, but. Shannon, you know, he's been to a lot of the local area schools, state, Virginia Tech, like I said, Michigan. They've been at Michigan a few times. So uh, he, he's kind of away from uh, deciding anything. He's not even put on a top list. So uh, a lot of these kids are taking their time and, and, and weighing all their options. And he's, he's a great playmaker. I mean, Jaden – Jaden Davis had a lot of weapons to throw to, so yeah. uh, they're they're a big part of making him look good too. He he also has a lot of time to pass because he has a top offensive tackle who will probably take care of anybody's entire front line. And David Sanders, David, you <laughs> you were talking about he's class of twenty five. You've been talking about him for a couple of years as well, Dina, and he was in Chapel Hill last weekend for the NC State game. Mac, you know, to, to, I don't know how much people understand how when the kids come in for a basketball game, the football kids, they actually are back in the tunnel with the visiting team. The, the press room is right next to the visiting team's locker room at the Dean Dome, and then there's this tunnel you have to come out when the team comes out of the court. Well, the football recruits will kind of hang out right there and then in an order, they walk out and they walk in front of the student section and up through the stands. And by the way, they went up the aisle right in front of Roy Williams, where he sits. And Roy was leaning over, fist bunging, 
fist bump at every one of those kids. So they walk out in front of the student section, the students are clapping for them, and some of them are yelling to, to David, David Sanders, and guess who David's with? Mac Brown. Mac made sure that he's going to walk right alongside him. So I thought that was interesting. But, you know, he's he's somebody that every program in the nation would take in a heartbeat. David is the, the number one player in the Clisa 2025 period. And he, he earned that right uh, last, uh, last spring. Me and Brandon was at the Rivals Camp down there at Nation's uh, Ford High School in uh, South Carolina, and he won the the offensive line award there. And you know, there was a lot of talent in the trenches down there. You had Sanders there, and he was going up against kids like Jamal Jared and and some of the other top defensive uh, Davian Hobbs, and it, it was just a loaded camp there. And David, you know, he he. David has got so much – he can grow so much. I mean, he is like 6'6", six, six in the 230s, 240 range, athletic. I, I know Coach Greer used him at tight end some. He's that athletic. So uh, – rivals, rivals now list him at 255. I, I, I was five feet away because I saw mm-hmm. him with Mac and did a little nod with Mac and – and um, he looks – he's six six. There's no doubt about it. He looks, you know, 255 for sure. He looked pretty big. Um, yeah, I don't he, know, he's uh, grown, you know. He, he, he must be he, – he's adding right now, and he has yeah. a frame where you can easily see him in the 325 range of being very mobile. Yeah, and, you know, he's a kid that my impression when I've always talked to him – He's got the whole picture in mind when he's being recruited. I mean, when I spoke to him after his trip up to North Carolina, because this was actually his – and he had been up there for just a walk around uh, during the camp season. He didn't participate. He just – but this is the first time he got to really see a lot of the other stuff and get to talk to, like, people – in and around the staff about other things just besides football. And what stood out to me was, I mean, when I asked him, you know, what were the best things about the visit, he was talking about how he got to talk with academic people. I think academics is going to be huge for him. He sees the big picture. He knows he could possibly play some years in the NFL, but he's wanting that great education. And he knows North Carolina can give him a a great education. So it was a, he had his whole family up there. He talked about, you know, meeting coach Clements and, and, and building a relationship with him and his sister asking coach Clements questions, his parents asking coach Clements Question. So it was kind of cool seeing him bring that up. And and like I said, getting to see everything that Chapel Hill has to offer was a, a big eye opener for him. Because like you said, everybody in the country is going to be wanting David Sanders Jr. He's just he's just that good. We're going to have two other parts to this podcast, so everybody knows it's just kind of a smorgasbord of stuff. We're going to hit on the 2024 quarterbacks, uh, target quarterback targets, and also the footprint. Footprint is what it is, but they have spent a lot more time in a certain part of the footprint of late. Let's go back to the 24 quarterbacks. We already discussed Jaden Davis. So let's talk about Jake Merkling or someone who kind of emerged here, what, about five weeks ago, maybe? Yeah. Um, we didn't really, you and I had never really talked about him before, but not only did he emerge, but he emerged right in the middle of the, of the picture here. He is certainly a target. I think that he's someone, um, you'll have to tell me whether you think if, if he was, if he called him up tomorrow and wanted to pop, I'd it'd be very interesting to see if they would take it or not right just yet, but he is definitely someone that they're very interested in. He's not uh, someone advanced the notion that they're using him to try to force Jaden Davis's hand. I don't think anybody could force Jaden Davis's hand. 
<laughs> Jaden's in total control of wherever he wants to go. So I, I just think that he's Merklinger is a kid that they would love to have. And there's a plan that if you don't get Jaden Davis, there's somebody else there. But um, he looks like a pretty good fit. When you watch his film and you look at Drake, and I think Drake is, I would say Drake's more the prototype that they want, but Jaden Davis is nothing like Drake physically. So what are your thoughts about Jake Merkling? He's a four-star kid from Savannah, Georgia, 6'3", 195. And he kind of looks like a modified version of Drake to me. Am I wrong for saying that or what? No. I'm just going to add a little bit. You know, the quarterback room for the 24 class kind of took a major change. Um, you know how high I was on Mabry Matower out of Texas. Yeah. And that kid had been to Carolina so many times. And with the coaching change with Coach Longo going to Wisconsin, you see how that bond with him led to a, co a commitment to Wisconsin. Mabry even told me he's like the plan was to come to Carolina. So, and we, we thought that a long time, long yeah. time. We, we, we thought that that was going to happen. So <clears throat> with Mabry going with coach Longo to Wisconsin and the hiring of coach Chip Lindsay, uh, of course, Chip Lindsay called Jaden Davis, but he did also get on the phone with uh, Merklinger who he was recruiting at Central Florida. He was probably one of their top targets. So the connection there was already there, you know, with him um, recruiting him for Central Florida. So um, would not be surprising to see, you know, Coach Lindsey go after his, his top quarterback target that he had at Central Florida. And Merklinger is – a Georgia kid right in that footprint that North Carolina wants to uh, recruit. You stated earlier, he looks, uh, his frame is a lot like, J uh, lot like Drake. So uh, four star Georgia kid, got a lot of, a lot of, a lot of good offers out there. Uh, he came up uh, a few weeks ago. So uh, we will have to follow this, you know, because I, I mean, and I, honestly think, you know, Carolina would take it if he wanted to commit because they've got to get a quarterback. They can't they can't wait to last last minute yeah. and take a quarterback. If you got a quarterback and they're in your top two or three and they're willing to commit, I think you gotta take it. So but And you have to uh, build the class around around yeah, it, it, with, with all due respect thing. to to Evan Bennett, you don't build the class around him. You would build it around a quarterback, especially mm -hmm. since it's very possible that the quarterback in this class is the next starting quarterback at North Carolina. So, and that's no disrespect to Tad Hudson or to Connor Harrell. It's just the way things could work yeah. out, depending on, on and, who it and is. with the portal today, you you never know who you're going to have, yeah, who's exactly. going to leave, or, or whatever. So, and, and Mac has emphasized, and he's talked a lot talked a lot about recruiting lately because we had the the signing day presser. And then we had a, a, a portal presser here a couple of weeks ago and we actually get Mac again um, next, next Monday. But he said, look, we want kids that want to be here because they don't want to lose guys to the portal. They know it's inevitable, but they want to, they want guys that want to be there. So you're right. If a kid's willing to commit say, look, I'm rock solid to you. And he's that high up on their board. Um, it would make a lot of sense to take him. KJ Jackson is a fairly new name on the radar for the class of 24 quarterbacks, three star uh, from Montgomery, Alabama, six foot two, 203 pounds. They like those underrated kids from mm -hmm. Alabama. Connor Harrell, you pushed for the four stars for so long for him. A lot of others did as well. I don't know a whole lot about KJ Jackson, so go ahead and educate me. Well, he came up this past weekend. Chapel Hill and uh, checked out everything. And, you know, his, you know, being from Alabama, you know, you're right, you know, right in the middle of football country and Carolina really high on him. You know, I believe those three are the top targets at quarterback. And um, so he, you know, six, two, he's, he's mobile. He's a dual threat. Um, I mentioned earlier in the podcast, you know, Zalfer list, you know, you got Carolina, you got Penn State. He's been Penn State a few times. 
a Mississippi, um, Louisville, uh, Kentucky, or some of the, some of the programs that are that are interested in him. So I mean, he's a, a you know a kid that North Carolina thinks that you know would be fit their style. I mean, uh, he's bigger than Davis. Davis is six foot. He's six two. So, uh, just, but. You know, he came he came on his own dime up there to to visit. So he's very high high on North Carolina. Um I don't know a whole lot about the style that he plays. I have not watched any film on him yet. I've been kind of swamped with basketball. So what <laughs> what, what is the style there? Because I think everybody listening to this or watching this, they've seen Jaden Davis tape. They've probably seen some Merklinger here of late. If the people that are really, really interested in this stuff. Uh, what kind of style? I know he's listed as a pro style kid, but how much of his throw, how much of his run, could he be a dual threat guy? What, what's your take there? I think he's he would be the better runner of all of them. Jaden's offense is, you know, they're set up pro, you know, spread, throw, throw. I don't think uh, even, you know, they did have a Chris Peel running the ball some, but Merklinger is – you know, we said it before, uh, looks a lot like Drake did when he played at Myers Park. And uh, Jackson, a lot like uh, Connor Harrell, I believe. You know, Connor did a lot of a lot of things in, in his high school, uh, just a winner and everything. And uh, a, lot of, a lot of people have kind of compared Connor with this, uh, with his kid, uh, Basically, because a lot of it, he's from Alabama and uh, looks a lot. His his uh, body shape is a lot like Connor, so it'll be interesting. Be interesting to see, you know, as their recruitments go, uh, who comes back for visits, who comes to camps, you know, in the spring if that happens, and, and everything. Yeah. But those three. Those three are the targets right now, and I think the staff would be elated with e either three, all three, you know, one of the three. You know, you got to have a quarterback in each class. Speaking of targets, there's a massive bullseye on the state of Georgia for this staff. And as you said earlier, you know, Georgia can't take them all. <laughs> Kirby can't take them all, and there's about 100 you know, FBS prospects every year in the state sometimes more, and a lot of them are power five kids. And one of the things that you and I talk about often is these three-star kids in Georgia that it's like if you're a good basketball team, but you play in the ACC, you're going to be judged against the rest of the ACC. But if you were to go to another league, let's say, you know, a mid-level league, the Atlantic 10 or something like that, you the team would do really, really well. And they'd look like a big time team, right? So a kid who might be a four star in a lot of other states may end up a three star in Georgia because he's kind of being judged among his peers there in Georgia, which is why so many three star kids from Georgia end up doing so well. North Carolina's got a whole bevy of those kids. Cayman Rutgers, the first comes to mind, a 5.5 kid or whatever that, who, who may end up in the NFL. So um, the footprint is Atlanta to D.C., but they are uber-focused in the greater Atlanta area, which is loaded with talent, but also throughout the state of, of Georgia. So what can you tell us about this shift into emphasizing that part of the footprint more than in previous years? And yeah, they have well, always, and, and let me qualify, they've always emphasized it. It's yeah. always been a huge, but it, it's, you know, when you're popping up these these offers on our offer sheet board, it's like Georgia, 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 Georgia. They're yeah. all, they're just going after Georgia kids like there's no tomorrow. Well, we talked a little bit when they hired Coach Warren, his connections in Georgia, Coach Lilly, connections in Georgia. They, they know that territory really well, and they've built – a lot of relationships with coaches in Georgia and, and, you know, it's just like you said, Georgia has so much talent that 
you know, it, it, it would be crazy not to go down in Georgia and, and find it. I mean, I sent you a, a tweet a few days ago where it listed the last, what, 15, 16 NCAA champions is in just in a little, in this small little region in the southeast from Louisiana to, to South Carolina. There's a reason why there's so many great football players in, in that region. I mean, good grief. But let's face it, Atlanta is a big Carolina market. I mean, a lot, a lot of alumni live in Atlanta, and a lot of these UNC's kids- second UNC's the most UNC alums outside of the state of North Carolina, located in the Atlanta area. Number two is Washington D.C. Because these kids, I mean, they they see Carolina stuff, you know, um, the brand. It's a national brand. And, you know, some kids, they may in their heart want to grow up and be a Georgia Bulldog, but let's face it, everybody can't. I mean, Kirby and his staff can't can't bring in 100 Georgia kids, uh, you know, and so everybody else gets to get a, get a piece of Georgia in their recruiting. So uh, North Carolina is always going to recruit their home footprint, uh, North Carolina, especially, uh, they've got a great wide receiver prop this year in North Carolina. It's just probably one of the best I've seen in a long time with Jonathan Paler, Alex Taylor, uh, George Ship, Channon Goodwin, Micah Gilbert, and Keenan Jackson. Just uh, I, there's plenty more, but. Um, and I think they they may get some of those guys from uh, North Carolina in the wide receiver room, but there there are some positions where they have to go, you know, more outside of North Carolina in the recruiting footprint. And uh, we've have been re- they've been really uh, busy issuing offers the last two weeks. Your your January offer sheet. <laughs> that what we run here in several days, that's going to be a, a, a task. I can't, I, I want to, I plead the fifth. Good gracious. I can't keep yeah. up. I mean, it's like I turn around and I've, I've update two or three and here's another one. Well, it's funny yeah. because if people, for people who don't know, if you're not a subscriber to THI, which is just $8 and 33 cents a month, you should be, if you care about Carolina football, basketball and recruiting, um, we have a, a, a thread on our premium message board. It's, it's a, it's an offer thread. And every time there is a new offer, we'll, we'll put the date, you know, 12, 16, and then update, you know, tight end from Texas offered or something like that. The last two weeks, it just says more offers. Yeah, because, because, it, because, every, because every time you'd have to change the, that header six times a day. So it just says mm-hmm. more offers, which I think is funny. Because literally it is, I, I'm going through, I'm, I'm in Syracuse every night in my hotel room. Or no, actually, I was in the arena still. I left, I left the dome at four forty-five in the morning when I finally finished my work, and I had I was getting ready to write my column. I took like three minutes, got a drink of water, exhale before I wrote my column. And I was I hit Twitter a little bit. And I saw there were two offers that that you must not have seen because because we hadn't yet retweeted it or anything. So I retweeted it, followed the kid, and it's like three thirty in the morning. Now, obviously, he didn't post it at three thirty. They didn't post it at three thirty. But you just gotta hit hit Twitter all the time to see if these kids are posting these offers because so many of them are, and so many of them are doing so from the state of Georgia. You yeah, mentioned my, the wide receivers in North Carolina, Dina, but in Georgia, it's every position group. Yeah, there's no position group that's lacking in Georgia. They're all strong. Yeah, um, but. Like I said, you know, with my Twitter feed, I've got I've got all kinds of kids tagging me. So sometimes I don't see the offer right away, and I'll just it's I'll see somebody retweet it, like Patrick said us at, at Carolina I'll like it, or sometimes I just go to his his uh his Twitter and and see what's up because uh, he's he he's the general manager, so he should know what's what's going on, but. But yeah, North Carolina, they've been really busy. Coach Brown's been, I've been seeing tweets from the the high schools in North Carolina. He's been going to 
Um, you know, he's made stops in Charlotte, like we said. He's been uh, in the mountain areas. He's been um, – he went up to Virginia. Uh, he's supposed to be uh, talking, I believe, in Greenville uh, this weekend at a coaching clinic for the eastern part of the – high school coaches and stuff. So Max traveling, and that's something that, you know, that we didn't see maybe during the COVID because Mac, he wasn't, you know, with the COVID and everything, he wasn't more out on the road. This year he's been, he's been uh, putting, well, I don't know what, what way of that's his strength, he know. does. If he drives or if well, he's he, not helicoptering he's like not, Larry. <laughs> that that's Kirby now. Kirby, yeah, Kirby. Yeah, I think well, uh, visor, right? Kirby yeah. visor. Larry. I think if you're a visor coach, you helicopter. If you're not a visor coach, you <laughs> but don't he's helicopter. been burning the roads up, uh, recruiting and everything. That's all and that's what he see. loves to do. And that works yeah. in his strength because one of the things he talked about during COVID was he couldn't get out there and shake. Mac is a great handshaker. He's a look you in the eye handshaker. And he makes you feel like you're the only person in the room when he is addressing you, when he's meeting you, speaking with you. And, and that's an area where as much as he can get out and see kids and, and be face to face with parents and coaches and stuff like that, the better for, I think the better for Mac, I think he enjoys it tremendously. Uh, but also the better for Carolina because yeah. that is that is a winning that is a winning approach for UNC because he's so good at it. Yeah, he mentioned you know when we talked to him before on in his pressers, you know he he wants to meet everybody associated with the kid. He wants to yeah. meet you know the family, the coaching staff. See, you know when he was walking down the hall, teachers like, oh, Coach Brown. He wants to to see you, you know, and he gets a good idea about the kid, you know, the teachers or God. He, he says he ran, he'll principals. randomly. He says he'll randomly ask people in a school about such and such, and he's told a lot of stories about that. And, if, if it's in, if it's impromptu and someone's not prepared and, and whatever the first thing comes out of their mouth, that gives you a little bit of an indication of how they really view somebody. So um, it's interesting, his approach. A lot of coaches have that approach too, but we know we're a lot more familiar with his because he discusses it a lot. Larry used to never talk about recruiting. A lot of coaches don't talk about their tactics because they don't want anybody else knowing their tactics when, <laughs> when most of them have the same tactics. It's just sort of the D-Day mentality a lot of the planning the d-day invasion mentality so many coaches have fortunately for us who cover mac he doesn't have that uh doesn't take that approach so we actually get to learn more about the way he does things the method to the madness dina this has been a lot of fun we have not done one of these massive yeah, box and, and you know we while. apologize uh you know we didn't get a, a commitment video but you were traveling to syracuse and and I've moved and I've having uh, internet issues. So we apologize for that, but hopefully we made up for it. Well, in the, uh, you, you froze some today in this one. You're using Ethernet, which which I love. Mm -hmm. I'm, I, I, I hunt Ethernet hookups in post game everywhere I go in basketball now and in football. So, uh, so you do have Ethernet. So hopefully everything will be rolling smooth from this point on. Yeah, but, hopefully we'll have some more podcasts, you know, with recruiting. Oh, we will. In the 24 class, uh, you know, heating up. Uh, they've even been offering some 25s. Uh, they've offered a couple of 25 quarterbacks. That Quite a few 25s, actually. Interesting. So, uh, well, just yeah. remember, everybody, for $8.33 a month, you can get Dina's intel on a daily basis because it's on our boards every day. Mm -hmm. But you have to be a premium subscriber. That's this stuff, stuff free. It was not like we wake up and it just drops in our lap and we put it mm -hmm. somewhere. Got to pay the bills. It's just eight thirty three a month. You could be a Carolina Tar Heels insider on football recruiting, basketball recruiting with Dave, and of course the Tar Heels football and basketball. We 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 were spot on with so much of the off season uh, coaching discussions that were going on. We we kind of had something there the day after the bowl game and stayed with it and. We're spot on with that, too. So we got a ton of intel. If you want to be the expert at the water cooler, you've got to become a premium subscriber. It's just $8.33 a month, which is probably I've been traveling a lot lately. So that won't even get you 
a soda and a pack of gum at LaGuardia Airport. So you have to pay more for that. that J- Jacob and I, when we do the 833 a month, we, we like to come up with different examples of what it means. For a while, it was almost a gallon of gas. But and then for a while it was like a number two at a drive. You can't get a, you can't get a bag. You mean at McDonald's for that? I don't have no. I have no clue. But but I, I do know that the other day I did go through. I didn't get a number because I don't do fries or anything like that. But I got a sandwich and it was in a soda. It was like eleven dollars or something crazy like that. So stuff's getting more expensive. But we have not raised our price since I took over this site August first, two thousand fourteen. Same price now as it was then. So go ahead and hop on. Take advantage and you can access all of Dina's wisdom and intel. For Dina King, this is Andrew Jones. We appreciate you guys stopping by. Thanks.